contrary to what some of you may have hoped for, wished for, I'm still very much here. Still here. Sorry, not sorry. I'm back with a vengeance! I guess, kind of. Eh, it's whatever. Some of you may be wondering if I'm wearing pants, and you're not going to get the answer to that. You're going to worry about what you can see. And ladies, what you don't see is better yet. Eh, I don't think it matters. Anyways, realize I didn't do the Q&A last weekend, so I guess I need to get caught up. And we're going to, by God, have some fun with this. If this camera screws up four or five minutes in and kicks me into demonic voice for a minute or two, too damn bad. Deal with it. Consider it some lowbrow special effects. Let's get started. B.W. Rosas, who's been grinding at this longer than I have. He's been grinding at this as long as a couple of horny lesbians. It's crazy. Well, check him out. He asks, should the WWE Evolution end with all women beating Stephanie? Yes. Like, at the end of the night, Stephanie should come out and talk about how this is one of her crowning achievements, how she helped make history happen, and then they should all come out and beat the brakes off of her and then kiss her. Give her spankings, you know, little leg scissoring in the middle of the ring, and then God comes out and he goes, Aga! And then he finds her up. And he goes, Aga! You have a daughter. Then he looks at her and he goes, Aga! You have a daughter! Aga! I mean, just be like one big Triple H orgy. And I don't know about you, but everything on the Hunter and Hearst and the Helmsley, you might not think you want to see it, but you would definitely check it out. Admit it to yourself. It's okay. Watching God plow all the women on the roster does not make you gay. It's helping you get in touch with your spiritual essence. Anyways, but yes, everybody should be able to spank Stephanie, and then Stephanie should be able to spank everybody. That's how this should end. That end the God origin. Apayo asks, favorite meal to eat when you're tired, and how's the workouts going? Well, considering I'm working about 70 hours a week right now, uh, there's not really much time for working out, unfortunately. So they're going about... <laughs> My favorite meal to eat when tired? Same thing as when I'm awake. Pussy. Black pussy. It's so good. Does it taste like chicken? Ah, I don't know about all that. But for the brothers out there that are like, that ain't my game. I don't get down like that. There are two types of men in this world. One that eats pussy and the other one that doesn't eat pussy. So that way they go looking for somebody else. So that way I can eat their pussy. Remember us white boys, we are some nasty freaky fuckers. And that's my favorite meal to eat. Judge me if you want. I don't fucking care anymore. James Borkham. Would anybody from current day WWE have been main roster material in the 80s or 90s? I think the most obvious answers would be clearly Brock Lesnar, um, Braun Strowman. Like, I actually think Brock, because of the legit background, and Braun Strowman, just because of his sheer size, would have a better chance than a Roman Reigns. Roman would probably get a shot, too. Like, those would be the first three guys that you think of when you think of 80s and 90s that probably would have been able to get a chance or at least a run with Hogan. As for the WWF in the 1980s, the main event was Hogan and whoever his dance partner was. So Brock would have been a dance partner. Braun would have been a dance partner. Roman potentially could have been a dance partner. Uh, Jack O'Reilly. Favorite meal to get from McDonald's. I don't know if there is such a thing as a favorite meal to get. It's like, what's least likely to make me feel terrible about myself and have my bowels regretting it for the next 16 to 24 hours? So I don't know if there is a favorite meal. Every once in a while, I'll stop there and get the dog some damn chicken nuggets. Yeah, that's pathetic, but screw you. Don't care. Callum Burgess 14 asks, did you play any sports at school? Well... I have to admit, I was relatively skilled with the skin flute. Still am. Some things never change. But in terms of actual sports that you could quantify, I was a runner. Cross country, track, decent, not exceptional. Better track guy than I was cross country guy. 
Uh, like shortly after I got out of high school, I was sub 440 in the mile, eh, you know, 52 second 400. So good, not exceptional, but better than your average honky. Uh, Jord, are you fed up with Alexa Bliss in the title picture? Frankly, if I watched it more, I probably would be. I'm not surprised that she's being forced uh, like that, but I don't watch enough to really care. But in theory, yes, yes, just a human. Uh, American Alucard. Best worst finishers in wrestling. Who can I piss off with this one? Okada and his fucking Rainmaker. Like he does that damn tombstone pile driver to set up a clothesline. You drop somebody on their head to set up a clothesline. And then of course, because the style of your matches are so fucking stupid, you gotta hit it three to six times for it to actually finish the match. It's not much of a finisher. If you gotta continuously do it, I'm just saying, it's not. If you had to fuck a girl six times to bust one nut, that's not exactly your finishing maneuver. Just saying. Or to get her, God forbid, to bust one time, even though you're sitting there and you're like, all right, even if I slow down and think about baseball, I'll be done in 15 minutes. Bitch, you got 15 minutes. I'm going to get mine. You best sure damn get yours. And if you can't, that's not my fault. It's mine because I got mine. Just saying. But it takes you six times and you can't make her bust. Once, somehow, someway, then clearly your finishing maneuver is fucked up. So Okada's Rainmaker is stupid. Frankly, a lot of the finishers in wrestling are stupid. Not just the goddamn New Japan thing. It's WWE. It's Impact. It's ROH. It's Lucha. It's all this other crap. You see more high-impact, uh, serious moves during the match, and it makes the finisher look secondary. And especially when you get to a point where you've done so much shit, young bucks, where when you get to the finish, it's always anticlimactic because you're like, oh, that's all it fucking took after all this other bullshit. It's this one stupid move. And Meltzer Driver! Who gets the Meltzer Driver, though? Does Dave supply to Nick and Matt? Or do Nick and Matt supply to Dave? Or is it a verse thing? Or do Omega and Ibushi join in as the Golden Lovers and they all pee on Meltzer's chest? I, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, best finisher in wrestling is probably Meltzer when he's watching the New Japan match. Guarantee you. He's like, Okada Omega, honey, we're fucking. That's probably the most intense 90 seconds of sex that anybody could fucking have. Dave Meltzer hot off watching the New Japan show. I promise you, fellas, we probably can't measure up. And if you've seen the gunboats on him, you know one way or another, whether by doinking the wife, doinking the bucks, or sitting there beating himself off, he's getting in a lot of work nowadays, and he's pushing 60. I salute you, sir, even though you're weird. How the hell you did it? Mason Clark, I'm planning on buying a new car. What kind would you recommend? Um, I don't know what your needs are. Do you need something you can lug stuff with? Do you have family? Do you have kids? Do you have dogs? Are you looking for warranty? Are you looking for price point? There's any number of variety of things that you can use as a determining factor. Um, are you leasing? Are you actually financing? Are you looking to be in a trade cycle in two to three years? Are you actually looking to pay the entire thing off? Are you thinking about resale value two, three, four years down the road in the peak of that, um, that what do you want to call it, that trade bubble? Um, are you comfortable with potentially being upside down in the car for a while as you have negative equity built into it? So I can't tell you uh, what kind to recommend. You know, that, that that's something I can't tell you. I don't know anything about your financial situation, your financial picture, your outlook, and kind of what your goals are the next th two, three, five, seven years. But you told me that, I'd give you a much better recommendation, basically. Byron Andreas, can Kenny Omega get a five-star match out of Dino Bravo or Jeff Jarrett? Fuck you. But the melts are probably five and a quarter, especially if it happened in Japan. I will say this, though. If Kenny Omega could wrestle 20 minutes with Dino Bravo, that has to be a five-star match. Why? Because <laughs> Dino Bravo's dead. Bang, bang. The one Jimmy 100. Is your interest in wrestling lower than it ever has been? Uh, it's this time or it's like 93 to 95. Right up there. And probably pretty close to equivalent. Yeah, it's really bad. Really, really bad. And yeah, the work schedule doesn't help. 
but that's not solely exclusively what it's about either. Uh, Wrestling Ramble. What match would you have main event WWE Evolution? Trish Stratus, Stephanie McMahon, and a spanking strap-on lingerie match. Do I need to say more? Because you spend the whole match thinking about what happened to Trish Stratus' ass and you think about where did Stephanie get those mom arms from. But you still want to see him get fucking nasty. That's milf time all the time. You imagine how many new computers would have to be bought after that for phones. Because man, so many of y'all, your screens would be so sticky. Anyways, voice of logic. Thoughts on a dish of Disney, fuck, officially buying Fox. That's exactly my thoughts. F-U-C-K, fuck that shit. Luis Sayala, yes, let's try again. Luis Sayala. As a lover of black women, how did your family react? My mom's cool with it. I don't know that Peter Arnold down with it or not because I really haven't talked to him all that much, honestly, as an adult. And if I remember correctly, none of my women have ever actually met him because I've gone long stretches of time being a dill hole of not actually communicating with him. Oh, but my mom is cool with it. But she secretly crushes for uh, dread-haired black men. So any of y'all fellas out there got dreads, kind of younger, and know how to handle a bigger woman, as my mom would say, thumber, thunder thighs is coming for you. <sighs> Try to get that image out of your head. Um, frankly, I wouldn't have cared if they all hated it or all loved it. I'm going to do what I want to do with who I want to do it with. And that's how all of y'all should fucking be in life. If you get nothing else from me, if you get nothing else, that's the one thing I want you to take away from me. Do whatever you have to do, but more so, do what makes you happy. Hopefully not at the expense of fucking others over, hopefully within legal parameters, but if you like people of a different color, a different gender, you like getting freaky nasty, you know, whatever, you want to be totally non-sexual. Do what makes you feel fulfilled. Do what makes you feel satisfied. Do what makes you feel happy. And people that care about you will either be down with that or they don't care about you and then kick fucking rocks. Uh, and your dream threesome. Uh, Obviously, the default answer would probably be like Serena Williams and Jada Fire. That's probably what you would expect me to say, and that would probably be one of them. Although I will go in a slightly alternative route here. I probably would like to have some type of Latin Hispanic woman and a white MILF that looks good. So I've never had either one of those. So if I'm going to have a threesome, which I will not acknowledge whether or not I've ever had one of those before, all I'm going to say is I want to do something different. I feel fully confident that if I play my cards right, I can have a threesome with two black women. That's not an issue. Hasn't been before. Won't be again if so desired. The issue is, could I meet the challenge of getting a Latin Hispanic woman and some type of white milf to fucking want to do it at the same time? Branch out. Do something different. That's the name of the game. But if two lovely sisters want me to go down to both of them and they both want that white cock, I'm down with that too. Call top hat. Charles Mitchell. What's worse? Triple H's reign of terror? Or Brock Lesnar's universal title reign. At least God was there. So it's Lesnar's universal title reign. It sucks shit. And then why did Shawn Michaels never jump to WCW? I think the answer is very simple. He's getting paid very well by Vince. He had the leverage of his friends having already jumped ship. And there are probably other reasons that everybody has alluded to in the past. Vols fan. How would you have booked Goldberg's first loss in WCW? I'll be honest, the only thing I might have done differently at Starcade 98 is it might have been to Hogan. And then you spend that whole year building back up to Goldberg Hogan. I don't know if I would have had Kevin Nash do it. But everything else, like even the finish, like with Scott Hall hitting him with the taser, the whatever the fuck, the, the shock stick, I'd have been okay with that. Goldberg had to lose at some point in time. And if done right, would have made for really, really good TV in 1999. That comeback, that buildup, back to him getting eventually to Hogan, running through NWO. Um, but, like, even the finger poke of doom, that's the thing, like, people always crap on the finger poke of doom. 
The Finger Poke of Doom could have been genius. It could have been brilliant. It could have been one of the greatest stories in wrestling history. It's the execution and the follow-up that makes all the difference in the world. Uh, Trinell Sally, you think the McMahon say the N-word in private? Vince said it before on TV. And before we get into the A versus ER ending, does it matter? No. No, it doesn't. Um, you know Vince has. I can darren, 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 damn T that God has. Shane, I don't know. I think not. I could picture Stephanie have saying some insensitive things, but I don't know that the N-word would necessarily be one of them. Probably not out of Linda's mouth. If I had to guess, if I'm handicapping the thing here. Uh, Israel Carrillo, what's your favorite movie? Obviously, besides Space Jam, which is a true story about how one man, one god amongst mortals, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, saved the universe from the basketball playing aliens called the Monsters. He was saddled with Bugs Bunny, who is not even real, and no fucking Murray. And he had to take on a team that had Sean Bradley's power. Sean Bradley! Obviously. Favorite movie ever, greatest documentary ever, because it's a true story, because it happened. Greatest movie of all time. Once you put aside that, probably Shawshank Redemption. To me, there's something very noble about a guy who's been wronged by the system, who knows he's been wrong, has to overcome all of this other crap, never gives up on himself, never gives up on his goal, and after over 20 years, finally achieves his euphoria. He gets his payoff. That to me is incredible. I remember the first time I ever watched Shawshank Redemption, I legitimately popped when the warden threw the rock through the fucking poster on the wall. Because it was at that moment I realized he had escaped. Incredible. That's probably my favorite non-Space Jam movie of all time. Horror Movie Review 73. Who do you hate more? Double J, Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn, Finn Balor. I think Sami Zayn and Finn Balor both suck. I do not, like, hate them, hate them. Dolph Ziggler sucks, he's annoying, and I hate him. But you were comparing those three... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! To the Memphis mid-card piece of crap, Jeff Jarrett, 24 karat gold, motherfucking son of a bitch, had to start two promotions for Vanity Freaking Projects, broke 10,000 guitars, never drew a goddamn dime, I think the answer is pretty obvious. And when all is said and done, only one of them had their own position. You know the answer. Never ask that again. Chewing Chamagan. Why hasn't Mania ever been held in Charlotte with all the wrestling history there? Charlotte certainly is a big enough city to hold that type of event. Uh, but I think the WWE kind of looks at it and says, what's the infrastructure there? If we're going to have it on the East Coast, we can either have it in a place like Orlando, uh, which is already a touristy type of place with that type of infrastructure already there. You can have the great weather. Miami, not a great sports city, but people are going to show up for WrestleMania, and it's a destination spot. New York City, destination spot. Some of these other cities and towns, potentially destination spots. I don't know that Charlotte is something they would classify as a destination spot. It probably would become a destination. It might just be something eventually that could happen. But I don't see it happening soon. Uh, the Wizabag, Wizabag, whatever the fuck. I still never figured out how to pronounce his name, and I don't care. Can this be the last question? Yes. Yes, it can. And I applaud you, sir, if you made it through over 19 minutes of just fucking horn dog weirdness to get to your question being the last question. Anyways, sorry I was gone for a little bit. Life gets in the way, life sucks, and then you die. So we might as well fuck as many bitches as we can and have some fun along the way. I'm the Slug Daddy, damn it! And this is OTR Essential. Remember, this is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And even though I'm shirt and tying, don't forget to be buying that damn t-shirt!